what are the common chats uh you see or you work with in when whenever you think of a normal chart what is the first chart which comes into your mind and that is our good old normal bar chart okay so when you see uh, the normal bar chart this is simple bar chart here i'm using one of the makeover monday's data set which talks about the christmas spending in us from year 2000 to 2018 now, uh, you can further elevate this chart simply by dropping the year-on-year -year change to your color shelf. So then it directly uh, focuses your user's attention to the marks uh, and to the data points which are of his concern, like 2008 has then been pretty good. Now, uh, what if I want to blend this to the theme I'm talking about, which is Christmas? So when you think of Christmas, then you think of Christmas lights. So how about making turning it into one of these? These are called as directional lollipop charts. And let's see how we can make it. So to start with, just, uh, all right. To start with, just drop the ears to your column shelf and rows to uh, and ear on ear change to the rows. So this will give you a simple bar chart. Now, once you have this, just create a dual axis by pressing Shift Control, and this makes a uh, a secondary axis. And then you have to do dual axis. Don't forget to synchronize them. And then I will go ahead and change the mark card of my secondary ones to a circle and then reduce the size of my bars for the first one. There you go. So this is your lollipop chart. And then again, I'll follow the same thing. I will drop these over here and maybe just highlight the labels for my maximum and minimum. So here you can specify this um, the field for which you want to do. So I want to do it for year-on-year -year change. Then it will just highlight it for the year-on-year -year change. But if you change it to the year, then it will just highlight 2018 and um, 2000. But this is not what we are interested in. We are just interested in year-on-year -year change. So this is a simple way of doing it. Then just do a little bit of cleanup, and then you will get a chart which is uh, which uh, marries to the theme of your data. Now let's move on to um, the most common kind of tables which you see at your work, and uh, which is commonly asked by your stakeholders. Like I have a dimension, and they want multiple measures to be dropped into one chart. So then how to make it more effective or um, bring uh, drive focus to the correct data points easily? So maybe something like this look uh, even better, right? So let's see how you can bring in two different types of charts together. So to do that, uh, I will bring the customers over here. So far, so good. I'm dropping the sales onto my columns, which gives me my simple bars. And then I will drop my profit ratio onto the column. So this creates a secondary chart over here. Now, I would like to change the profit ratio to a lollipop chart. And then I would do dual axis. Now, see, this is something which Tableau does automatically and which is sometimes very annoying. So how to stop Tableau from doing it? First, use your good old backward button, which I love, love. Uh, and then force Tableau or make Tableau understand that you are just interested in bars and remove the automatic preference over here. So I'm changing the last one to the circle because I need the lollipop chart. So I'll make it to dual axis and synchronize, and then just reduce the size of the bar. OK, and I want the size of the circle a little bit bigger. All right, so this looks much better, but it's still not there. So what I'll do next is that I will create another marks card by just Control-Shift and dropping my sales bill next to it. 
and I don't want this to be a circle. I'll leave, change it to a bar and then just make a dual axis and synchronize them. So now you see the uh, axis headers are coming at the top of it. Now I don't want it to be repeated at the bottom. So I'll just do a few of the cleanup stuff, which is like you can go to the edit axis, clean the titles, and if you go to the marks, you can do none. So this will clean your secondary axis over here. So I repeat the same thing from my profit ratio and make it as none. Okay, so this this looks much better. Uh, I have to clean the grid lines. I don't want them. And then I want to highlight the data points based on the profitability. So for example, your company has set up a profitability, like if a customer gives you like 25% of profit, they are profitable. So I've created a, a calculated field. So if the profit ratio is less than or equal to zero, it's a not profitable customer. And if it's around greater than 20%, then it's highly profitable. And between zero to 20, it's profitable. So I'll drop this to my color marks. And I'm doing that in all, all marks cards so that all the dimensions are colored in a similar fashion. So now it looks much better. But what if I also want my customers to appear here? So a neat trick of doing it, and now uh, with the later versions of Tableau, you can directly type in your calculations onto your pills. I'll do average of zero. Okay, so this creates a new marks card for you. Okay, then you just shift it in the front and then shift control and drop it to create another marks card. And I'm just doing it as dual axis. And I don't want it to be circle. I change it to a Gantt and also this one to a Gantt bar. And what I would do is that I'll drop this customer name onto the label. So this average of zero gives you an extra mark card to play with. So I'm using that to show my customer names. And I will remove the opacity to zero. I will remove the border lines to none. And, and in the label shelf, what I'll do, I'll change it to match the mark color. So now my customer name would align to the profitability. And make it a little bit bolder. Or you can use Tableau Medium. Yeah, I always like using Tableau, uh, Tableau's in-house um, fonts. They are pretty neat. And now I don't want this customer name. So just go and untick show header. Similarly, for the second one, I don't want it to be colored. I don't want this borders to be there. So I'll just repeat the same formatting stuff. Now you see I don't I'm not liking the way this average line is coming. So I'll just do edit axis and then I'll fix it to say 0 0.5 so that my customer names are nicely aligned. And and then I'll again do clean up those uh, accesses and then this is how you get it and you can add the banding on the row so that it is easier for the users to uh, read the uh, different rows and they can and just reduce the size of the columns so there you go this is one of the ways to make a simple table look more attractive and effective for the users Here are key profit indicators, and bands stand for big annotated number, or, and they are very good in uh, highlighting the key matrix of an, any organization. You want to show it in your dashboard. And, uh, but uh, you are not able to show the trends and all. It has its own pros and cons. So uh, let's see how we can make them. So here I'm showing the profit for the current year. You can do that by a simple calculation. Like I'm, I'm just using the 2018 profit 
So just year for my current year, a profit for my current year, and I'll drop this to my text mark. And um, it's always advisable to change the default properties of your marks uh, so that if the user uh, tries to generate the report, he gets it in the correct format. And then I also want to show the year on year change in the profit. So how do you do that? So I'm, I've also created the profit for my previous year. So I'll just drop 2018 minus 2017 divided by 2017. Okay, so this, but the calculation says it is valid. I'll give you guys two seconds. You can chat me in the window. What is wrong with this calculation? Okay, mm, most of you got it uh, right. Let me say the correct way of calculating is that you aggregate your profit for the year, current year, and your aggregated profit for your previous year, and then and use the aggregation in this calculation. All right, so that's how you create it. So. I've already uh, pre-created this calculation, so I'm going to use that, So, which is my uh, change in profit. So I will just drop this onto my text. So now this is coming over here. Now, um, and since it is big annotated numbers, let's change the text. I like to make it even bold and maybe 36. Okay, and uh, whenever you are making all these annotations, please um, ensure that you are not uh, using too many different fonts and too many different font sizes. Stick to one font. It's always advisable to not go beyond, uh, you know, two, uh, two or three font sizes in your visualization. And I don't want my profit ratio to be so big and okay. And just align it to the center. Since we are referring to profit, I will just call it out over, over here. Okay. So and change it to 14 and center align it. All right, so this is one way of uh, doing it. So it is looking okay, but if you see, and you must be wondering how we are getting the triangles and what's the use of it. Now, if you have to show your bands for region-wise, and your regions might be having uh, positive and negative year on uh, year change for your profit, so then you want to make it look uh, more intuitive. So you change the you change the format of your profit, change of profit to sh uh, show the upward and downward arrows. Now these are nothing but uh, Unicodes and uh, Tableau allows you to use Unicodes in, in its formula. So you can use uh, them to get, give this cool effect rather than you know using images to make it more cumbersome. So uh, this is one way of doing it. And I will fix it to the width, maybe make it even more bigger. And let's see why this is not aligning. OK. And then what, and I also want to give a background color then how you can do it. So just create a simple calculation. If my change in profit is uh, greater than zero, then it should show a color. So I will just drop my bands color over here. So it gives the color to the text. Now, if you want to change the background of it, just change your marks from text to a square and just increase the size of the square to cover the text. 
Now, uh, if you have joined the earlier session of Ben Skinsley, you would, you, he has suggested that not to use the background so bright, so maybe you can reduce the opacity. And always while using the color, be conscious uh, to use colors which are uh, color blind fr friendly so you can use those palettes or uh, something which caters to the color scheme of your organization. So this is one other way of showing your bands. The next way is what if I want to use the shapes as well. So I'll drop these band color to my shapes and just simply change it to the different shapes. So my downwards and up, uh, downwards showing a decrease and upwards showing an increase. Maybe the colors are not little. And so you can change the color. Maybe I want the truths to be grayer and my false to be red. Yeah. So this, this looks more intuitive for the users, okay? The next uh, chart, which is very simple and it is called as the unit chart progress bar. And um, you can, um, it's very simple to use and is more effective when you're dealing with percentages and you want to show how far you are from reaching your uh, end state, which is like 100%. And uh, so for, to create that, just drop your regions to the rows and your sales to the columns. And I, I will use quick table calculation to get percentage of total. So this will give you like across all the regions, the sales is 100%. Now to give the progress of um, 100%, what we will do is that, let me reduce the size of the bar. Okay, uh, I, I will again create an av use average of one. One represents the 100%. So this will create another uh, marks and I'll create a dual axis. See, again, I did the mistake. So I need to force Tableau to tell, uh, force tell Tableau that I always need bar. And then I want the, to synchronize it and bring the total sales front. So move marks to the front. So this is how it will come. And uh, this orange is looking hideous. Let's change it to lighter gray. Okay, so the, and then further cleanup, and uh, that is remove the grid lines. It's of it, the, Please remove the grid lines because they don't add any uh, value uh, for your charts in some cases. And uh, wherever possible, uh, try to do that so that it declutters your visualization and users are able to focus on the element, uh, the important elements in your uh, graph. Then, then to show the progress, if I want to show the unit per unit progress, that is for every percent, then simply right click onto your axis and add a reference line. I will make it like 10%. So let's point one and do it as none, tool tip none, and the lines a little bit thicker. Okay, so that's how you can, this is a simple easy way. Uh, there is no uh, one way of doing a thing. There are more than one ways to do this. Uh, I, I'm just showcasing a few of the simpler tips you, and I hope you can use them in your day-to-day -day work. So you can sh sh see this progress, and I really like the way it highlights that how far off you are from your uh, next, uh, you know, uh, next target. So that's how when you create it, you can uh, you can keep on building the progress bars like this just by adding the reference line. So it's a pretty neat and uh, I found it very uh, helpful. And uh, you can go to um, uh, Tableau Zen Master Jeffrey Schaefer's uh, public uh, 
Tableau public uh, site and you can see that he has uh, many more variations of the simple bar graph. This is one of those. And uh, he he has a, uh, and here he has also highlighted the region which are not performing. So maybe you can just drop the region here, or maybe based on your KPI you can drop it to the color marks. And this clearly focuses the user's attention to oh south is not doing good. Okay, so this is your unit chart progress bar. Then I'm going to a pin bar graph. It is a bar graph, no doubt about it. But uh, it is so simple and it's so effective. And uh, the best thing I like about this is it uses very less real estate when you use in a dashboard. And this was one of the workout uh, Wednesday challenges. And I picked it up from there. So let's see how you can make it. So just drop the your subcategories onto the rows, your sales onto the columns, and sort it out, the entire view, make it really thin, and clean up your grid lines. There you go, I don't want this, but maybe we can do that later. Okay, now a neat trick to show is uh, you can do window max, of sum of sales. So what this is doing is it is, okay, where, where did it go? All right, sum of sales. So this is getting the maximum sales in this, uh, in this visualization, which will be for the phones. And then I'm just using this to highlight. So before doing this, let me force Tableau to use bars. Okay, and then I will make it a dual axis and would synchronize them. And I want the sales marks to come forward and I'll change this to a lighter gray. Okay, and you don't need any of these headers appearing. And other simple trick is just show the labels. So I'll show the sales label. I'll drop the sales onto my secondary marks card. And I will drop the subcategories on my first card. So here you see it's appearing in the middle. So just align it properly. I will left align it. But still it's overlapping. So a neat trick is just go to your labels and hit enter and it comes up and just say this. Then I don't need the header over here. So this is pretty neat, right? All right. Next one is park lines. I, I think you must be familiar with this, but let's see how we can make it from scratch. So spark lines, as you know, would work on continuous date. So I'm using the order date from our super sale store data set and then drop my sales over here. You can double click and it will show you Spark. So this is line graphs. Spark lines are just concentrated line graphs. And just make it, but yeah. Just clean this up and not show so big. So, and I will remove the grid lines again. Okay, but I generally like my spark lines to end with a dot and highlighting how it performed as compared to the previous uh, data point. So to do that, I've just created a simple calculation, which is called last sales. This is nothing but it's bringing the last sales point. And I'll just drop it over here to create my secondary axis. So you see just one data point is coming over here and I will force it to be a circle. And then I will create a dual axis. And don't forget to synchronize it. So it nicely comes at the end of the line, which is pretty neat. And I don't need these. And I don't need this. 
and maybe I want to highlight them and I don't uh, hide these and I yeah you can just clean this up and not show everything and okay and maybe I want to highlight this dot based upon how it performed uh, as compared to the previous data point so this you can just create a simple calculation field which compares uh, looks up the previous value and sees if it is less than zero or not and then just it's a boolean just drop it over this and it will show so I'll change the line to be a gray so yeah just then pull this up and make it look smaller so these are your spark lines so that's how you create spark lines Okay, why didn't it change it to gray? Okay, let's do it from here. Okay, so that's how the spark lines are created. Now the last one and uh, a bit of a fun is the drill down bar chart. Now this uses the set actions which were introduced in uh, Tableau 2018.3 and I picked it up and used it in one of my Makeover Monday challenges, which was on uh, Stephen Curry's uh, data set and how he rates the popcorns. And to do that, just, and I used this particular uh, trick to show to show it. So let's let's see how we can create it. Okay, so the simple, um, you must be wondering that, you know, uh, why set actions? You can simply do it by, uh, you know, creating a value which with an hierarchy where in Superstore you already have category and subcategory as a hierarchy. And when you click on the plus sign over here, it automatically drills it down. But, you know, uh, you like it or not, when you give such uh, visualization to the users, it's not very intuitive for them, and the plus sign is not very obvious. So we are, we are through our visualization, we are making it more obvious. So let's see how we can do that. So for that, I'll create a simple set. I and right click, and you can create a set. I already have a set created based on the category. I just edit and show this is the set and then I will create a subcategory drill uh, so that it says whenever the set is true it shows me a subcategory otherwise it shows me a category all right and then a couple of simple calculations to, uh, to show the plus sign and all those stuff and I've just created over here. You can download my uh, Stephen Curry's visualization to see how I have done it over there. And we just drop it onto the row shelf. You see the plus sign appearing over here and the subcategory drill which we created over here. So when, and then to make it work, I need to create the action at the worksheet. The other tip I would like to tell is that actions, when you uh, implement it on a worksheet, it won't automatically work on your dashboards. So you have to separately create your uh, actions on the dashboards if you're bringing uh, the worksheet onto the dashboard. So first I'll just remove this and start from scratch. So to add action, just go change to set values and uh, the social See, sheet is my demo, and I will call the category, and I want it to run when I select it, and if nothing, then remove all values. That's it. And when you drill here, it comes up, comes, expands and shows the, all the subcategories for this category. And when you again click it back, it it collapses. Uh, why I'm using this here because as you know when if you if I remove this you Tableau groups everything together that's why I'm putting the category over here just so that the demarcation is there and I'll just hide the headers and then rest of them are pretty uh, just formatting changes 
which I've done is just format it, rotate the labels and hide your uh, hide your field labels and those kind of formats I've done. That's it. So uh, that's how it will look. Now you must be wondering how I brought these total sales over here. So that is also just a simple calculation. I'm um, creating another calculated field to force it to bring the uh, total sales. So I've just said that if the category set is true, bring the sales. And I will drop this onto my details. Once you drop it, this will be available for your to create your reference line. So I'm just creating a reference line and I will just call that total sales and make it total. When you do total, it would be create uh, calculating the total per pane, which is our category over here. So after just uh, doing simple formatting like total sales, I'll call it as total sales equal to the value of that's it I don't want the line to be shown and you see the total sales are coming over here so just simply format this to come at come at the center and that's it clean it up remove the grid lines align it centrally and there you go you will get a uh, a nice clean visualization and which is like which will not take if you are bringing it into a dashboard it will not take too much real estate itself so you can judicially use the area of your dashboard okay and uh, Matt Chambers has a lot of other uh, use cases of set actions so I'd encourage you guys to go to his public uh, si uh, public Tableau public profile and view those so I think that's it from my end and I hope you found these uh, tricks uh, useful and I hope you would be able to use them and uh, last but not the least I would also encourage all you guys to participate in the community challenges which are run by Tableau like uh, Makeover Monday uh, Workout Wednesday this not only helps you keep interested with the tool but also, and it keeps you engaged and also you keep on learning. Uh, you, it's not necessary that you always uh, make, uh, you know, take pressure in participating all the challenges. Pick and choose what interests you, but keep, keep yourself engaged and keep yourself involved. That's it from my end. Sagar, back to you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Swati, and thanks a lot for sharing all the tips and tricks with us. Thank you. Perfect. So let's go down to our next. Let's go down to our next presenter, and I think I feel proud to introduce him. His name is Pradeep Kumar. So currently he's working as a senior consultant with Beenex in Bangalore. He loves to play with colors and create visualization in Tableau that elevate insights and art. So the best part was that he was in top 10 in the last two Iron West feeder contest. And the fun fact about his is that he loves to watch cartoons, loves to paint, and a nature admirer. Over to you, Pradeep. Share your screen. Thanks for the introduction, Sahar. You are good. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm Pradeep Kumar. So I'm going to just uh, give you uh, some information about like my journey to Iron Universe. So these, this is the short description about me, uh, and Sagar has covered most of this stuff. So I invest. I guess many of you guys uh, came to know about this I invest. It's and I have just participated in that and got in top ten position like for two consecutive times and I have given some interview 
to a Tableau Community Spotlight. Okay, okay, let's go. So what is INVIS? So INVIS is, as I said, it's a data visualization contest, and uh, it's a it's a platform that where you can just uh, challenge your data skills, and uh, if you are lucky enough to win, you'll be able to attend the Tableau conference where you'll be facing a final competition live on stage. So why do you participate in INVIS? As I said, you can able to win a chance for a Tableau conference. And other than that, it gives you an opportunity to challenge your data analysis, visualization, and storytelling skills. And it also serves as a platform where you can get exposure to Tableau community, and you can able to contribute. You can get help. You can just create stuff. There are lots of people like uh, that. OK, and then to win or learn, you can't lose. So you, you will be learning a lot of stuff when you participate in this INVIS. And this INVIS, um, it will give you a good experience also. So I'll just give you a brief stuff about what INVIS and how it works. So the rules of the INVIS is they'll be just announcing a topic like water, agriculture, music, something like that. And you guys have to just choose your own uh, data set, like uh, some data set that are available in public sources. So you can download it, and you just create a visualization, and you can publish it in Tableau Public. And uh, mostly, they'll be giving a duration of one month so that you you can just submit it within the deadline and you have to wait for the result. OK, so what is the judging criteria? How your results will be judged by the judges? So there will be two rounds of judging with two panel of judges. And your visualization will be judged based on three criteria, which are design, storytelling, and analysis. Each carries 10 points. and Based on this, uh, you'll be getting a total of 30 on average scores of all judges. So make a note of it. Like you will be concentrating of these three criteria when you are creating a visualization for this INVIS. So how to prepare for INVIS? OK, once you got data, don't just rush yourself upgrading visualization directly uh, in Tableau. So just download the data set, take your time, analyze, uh, just uh, do some stuff, do some research, and bring some story. And uh, and then do a rough sketch of what the kids are going to bring out, and how the dashboard should look, and what are the types of charts you are using in a simple paper. That's, that would be good. And make sure that your storyline should be strong. That is where uh, your point will uh, go or come. So it depends on your storyline. So just take care of your storyline. So this is how INVIS works. First, they will uh, announce the topic and then choose a data set bring out a story, derive KPIs, and then create a dashboard, submit your VIS, and uh, submit. You have to submit a form before submitting the VIS, final VIS. So you have to fill in the form, and then wait for the results. OK. So the iron VIS feeders. Feeder is nothing but a qualifier round, like you'll be in a year, you'll be getting three feeders on on particular months. OK. Uh, so feeder one, they'll be giving a topic. Feeder two, topic two. And feeder three, topic three. And and they'll be choosing a top 10 in each feeders. And the top one will be chosen as a finalist. So these three finalists will be uh, going to the final INVIS 
challenge on stage live that they'll be giving a data set and they have to create a dashboard on stage live before thousands of people within uh, 20 minutes i guess within 20 minutes of duration those people those finalists have to do a, a dashboard or visualization that will decide who the invest champion is so this is how it works so let me start up with my experience with INVIS. So must my first INVIS is uh, I just participated uh, last year, 2018, feed at three. They have given a topic water. So I just gone through some data and, and then I have decided to do some visualization on monsoon patterns in India. So I have downloaded the data Fortunately, some data are available in this data.goe.in website and it contains the data, weather data of India for the past 100 years. And the thing is like you have to do some data cleansing work. So maybe in Excel or Tableau prep, you can do that for your con convenience. So this is what I have come up with. Let me go to the public and I'll just show it what I have created with it. So I have just inverted this bar chart and uh, with some random. Okay. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Pradeep. We are not able to see your screen. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. Go ahead. So this is what I have created for my first INVIS. So this represents each drop represents a uh, rainfall and each year in each month. So here if you choose an year it will just filter for that particular year. And you can see that each drop represents the mm. The bigger the drop, the higher the rainfall. So this is the consecutive rainfall uh, for the past 100 years in India. And you can just come up with an insight like in June, July, and August, they will be getting a lot of rain. So, and then I just use this. And then I just uh, use this chart to just highlight where the notable floods and drafts. And here you can see when you, when you just click here, click on a state that particular states the district will the rainfall of the district will be just showing here with uh, sheet actions and this is like a trend of uh, annual rainfall for the for the years and i have just used the vision tooltip for uh, monthly rainfall details. So from this, you can just see the trend line, the rainfall is, the rainfall trend is going down and uh, you can see the temperature here are rising up. You can see it from the trend. So this is my first dashboard and if you click it here, it will navigate you to the second one. It is similar like that. If you choose a year, uh, the rainfall for that particular state will be showing here for and each droplet will be representing a month, month rainfall. And, and then this is just some uh, brief info of like, which is the wettest place and driest place. Um, got it from Wikipedia. 
so this is what I have done so okay so you will be getting scores like this if you if you are one among top 10 like like you can see that my which has been selected in top 10 and uh, this is how the scores i got a i got an email from uh, tableau like the score breakdown and uh, this result this will be published in uh, tableau public blog page so here you can see the first round scores are this and the second round will be second round judges will be like reviewing your this in uh, some critical way so you can see my scores are just gone down so from this you can see that I have to concentrate more on this analysis and storytelling part because it's my first time and uh, I was actually new to Tableau so I just wanted to explore what this event so I just gave it a try and uh, really came out well and with that with this data and I just created a fun with uh, with my with my marks with my scores so this is from the score I just created this bar chart like for this particular uh, breakdown what's my portion just to and what are the who are the judges so you can just play around with tableau and it's about exploring okay then so what i have learned from my first time was so as i said you will be getting your scores and feedbacks by the judges through a mail if you are one among top 10 I guess you'll be having an option like getting your scores even uh, if you are not in top 10 so what I what what they said was like the chart type chosen and the color scheme were good and uh, using raindrop as a uh, shape is was creative and the overall layout was good and the negative points are like the header font could be much bigger and bolder and the storyline might be a bit clearer and uh, the analysis part wa was less maybe and some I just use more images as you see like and they said it it didn't work out well like these kind of images they said it was distracting so this is my first iron vis. and my second iron vis. like recently uh, this this feeder this feeder was released recently like in April I guess so in that the topic was agriculture so they have made a change like they have given a predefined data set and within that data set you have to come up with a visualization with a story so it was quite complicated because the data you can see here um, was a bit difficult to understand the terms and the lookups with some codes so I took a time to just uh, analyze what it does and what the data is about and then you have to do some data prep work some data cleansing stuff to just understand what the data is about okay editing. and then um, I have just decided to come come up with some KPIs like uh, to concentrate on five major problems the thing is the data is about um, agriculture agriculture data in US so you you are not sure about the 
geographical conditions there so you need to explore some stuff outside this data to just uh, understand what the data is so here you can see i just made a rough layout like the header should come there come at the top and uh, what are the challenges people are facing and uh, i have chosen five problems and and then the analysis part will be coming this way and at the bottom like what we can do to overcome those challenges so i just uh, took some five problems and did some analysis so this is how my dashboard layout works and this is what my dashboard looks like i'll just go through the dashboard now okay so in this was i i have i think i have rectified most of my mistakes what i have done in my last i invest so i have given a bold font and uh, i just want this layout to be uh, unique so i just use some shape image at the back and uh, these are some of the challenges you can see and for each challenges i have I did some analysis like like this and use some band to highlight the numbers and finally i just uh, for each problem i just given some suggestion like this could be done to overcome these challenges so the flow i have just learned how to bring out this flow so if you are doing a dashboard if you are doing a visualization uh, the flow will will be important and the storyline should be important okay so what made my second i was a hit as i said the storyline was structured you should have a structured storyline and then in that dashboard you could see i have used uh, five colors each color for each problem and if you see i have used i have color coded each problem with each color so that you can able to just concentrate on that particular part so it drives the inside the story and it will allow the user to understand well so you can see that i have used that color code to the overall dashboard so it looks neat and clean right okay and then the results are announced and uh, i was happy that my wish got placed in top 10 again now it's in fifth position so this is what my these are my first round scores for analysis design and storytelling and as i said before the second round score second round judging will be a bit critical so i got these scores so if you are if you are one among the top 10 you'll be getting a detailed detailed uh what to say detailed uh comments on your visualization and okay i'll just give you some tips for the beginners so do participate in i invest we have still two more feeders to go you can just 
uh, go to the Tableau public site and you will be able to get all the details. So create a simple dashboard design with the effective story line and analysis. Don't use too much uh, charts, text, or images. Just make it simple, clean, and clear. Uh, and then use a minimum of colors and simple colors. And uh, give more white spaces between each dashboard elements that will able to make your charts to stand out and easily it will grab the attention of the viewers and they can able to get the insights more effectively. So what I have uh, analyzed is that the this is the participation number of participants all over the world. You can see that last year only five partic Indian participants were there. Maybe um, most of them are not aware, I guess. So people should participate, and we have to just challenge our data skills. And uh, it's a it's a quite good experience you will get when you participate and when you're able to explore a lot of stuff and learn about uh, how to do this analysis and storytelling parts. And in 2009, for FIDA 1, there were only four Indian participants. That's really, that's really bad. So maybe we'll increase the count. So gear up yourself to participate in the qualifier 2 round. And it is, it is in progress. Like, you can still participate. And the deadline as given as uh, July 21. So the topic was given as music. So just grab some music data and do some visualization. And don't forget to submit your visualization before the deadline. OK, apart from this, where can I practice Tableau? Uh, where can I practice Tableau? OK, so there are some projects. There are some projects conducting in Tableau community where you can able to develop your Tableau skills, like Makeover Monday. And Makeover Monday is just a weekly project, and they'll be giving a data set weekly, and you have to come up with your visualization and uh, insights. And your results will be reviewed every week, and the author will be giving some comments on your results, so you can able to just rectify your mistake, and you can shape your data skills. The second one is Workout Wednesday. Workout Wednesday uh, is a weekly challenge, too, where the authors will be given will be providing a visualization, and you have to replicate the same visualization uh, from your side. Like you have to replicate exactly. So this will help you to uh, develop your technical skills in Tableau, and it will be uh, it will be very useful for for people who loves to learn Tableau. And the third one is Project Healthwiz. So this is a monthly project, um, and the author will provide a data set related to some health healthcare healthcare data sets, and you have to just come up with visualization, create a dashboard, bring some insights, and the uh, final one is Sports is Sunday. If you are a sports person, so this is the one you'd love to do, you'll be getting uh, some sports data. And uh, you you have to, again, you have to come up with visualization. So you can just participate. There are there are some more projects you can, uh, you can just see in Tableau community. So just participate in this and uh, just shape your skills. If you want to follow me, you can just note these links. I'm in Tableau Public, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Gmail. And if you want to 
know more about me just read my int recent interview i've given for uh, tableau community spotlight and that's it from my side thank you thanks oh. everyone perfect thanks a lot for the waiting we are already over time i i think i can just we can just take uh, maybe 5 minutes just to answer any questions people have so i think i have i always ask all my presenter i think may i can start with swati so swati uh, this is more about for the people who are new to wlu right so what will be the three points you want them to concentrate when they are starting their journey with wlu yeah uh, thanks agar uh, i think uh, my key point to to all the new users would be please join the tableau community be active in it don't do the mistakes i did i was very shy in joining the community and i am bit um, away from the social media i only joined twitter this year so don't do those mistakes if if i have to see my learning curve over the past 4 years it reached a plateau for past 3 and then as soon as i join community this year it is just exponentially increased you can see that through my public profile also the first few visits which i have published are not so uh, good i think they are good use cases of makeover monday but uh, after that um, it has improved and and also uh, do, uh, do participate in the challenges which pradeep has also mentioned the makeover mondays workout wednesdays all those things and keep learning because it not only um, you know these are not challenge this will challenge you to learn and keep you engaged and um, honestly when you are working in an organization sometimes it happens that the newer version of tableau is out in the market but your organization is slow to take it up but if you are uh, in sync with the community you get to know the features and you can practice on your own so uh, i i found it's very useful and then you can push your organization to make the changes faster upgrade the versions faster perfect and i think one thing which swati and prati both mentioned is about feedback right so never get discouraged when people give you a feedback i think you should always listen to people feedback it will help you to your learning so always take feedback from people when you are creating something because they might see something which you guys are not able to see i think that would be my one tip for everyone who is starting a journey with tableau so maybe pradeep you can just add it and then i think we can close the session yeah so i think pratip what i want to listen from you is that what are the three key things you keep in mind when you are creating this dashboards and how do you differentiate when creating a dashboard for inves and maybe a business dashboard when you are working for a company so how basically you distinguish between these two cases over here okay that's actually a good question so when it comes to business dashboards like you are really restricted to use some colors some kind of charts uh, mostly the charts will be like uh, bar charts and line charts so that made me to uh, that made me to like that um, made me to explore more about tableau like in community challenges you can able to explore a lot of stuff so and you can able to uh, come up with some other creative ideas uh, that will be really helpful and by participating in these community uh, challenges you can able to learn and it will help you uh, in your business also like you can able to come up with some other effective ideas and some some kind of uh, stuff in business perfect and i think the last thing i want to request everyone i have just pasted a link for feedback to provide it we are a data company we love to hear from you what we should include in our next with connect sessions and things like that so it would be great just give your feedback i have just pasted in the comment section and i think once again i want to thank pradeep and swati for taking their time and sharing their journey of tableau perfect so i will 
see you all in the next session of West Connect, which is there on 26 July. Perfect. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a safe weekend. Thanks, Swati. Thanks, Pratik. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sagar.